Welcome. My name is Adidayo and this is Perceptions by Adidayo. Uh, in today's video, we'll be walking through 10 things and the 10 steps you need to increase your productivity as an entrepreneur. 10 steps to increase your productivity as an entrepreneur. Uh, before I jump into it, I would like to say I've not posted for about you know, a new video for about two weeks and the main reason is because I've been trying to learn a new skill of book marketing. Uh, we've just finished. I've just been able to compile a new book, which is not finished. And um, trying to learn how to market it is not very easy. It's been a nice, pleasurable journey learning uh, a new skill of marketing. Um, I'll leave a link to this new book titled Building Your Financial Fortress in the, in the comment section below um, go into that and just you know, you know follow the link through and actually if you know anything about book marketing do you want to just drop me a comment so that I can contact you I would like to learn more it's been a nice journey but um, you know trying to contact new people know new people get people onto people to podcast and things like that it's um, been nice to know one or two things on how to um, you know market a new book but the link is in the description session below just um follow through and see if you would it contains lots of i'll do it i'll do a separate video and a book review on it later but not in this video but yeah that's why i've not been able to post for a while and now we're back okay let's jump right into it 10 things you need to know as an entrepreneur that increases your productivity uh, i would like to take the next few videos to you know talk around productivity and time management so let's start this series off with these 10 things you need to know the first thing is Number one, you don't need permission to start. To start anything as an entrepreneur, you don't need someone's permission. You know, almost 80% of the things that we do now, you don't even need a qualification for it. You can actually learn it without qualification and, you know, start. So you don't need a permission of someone or uh, go to someone to seek permission to start what you really intend to. As long as you are convinced that it's what you want to launch into, go for it. You don't have to start looking at what's the what's the way you want to go around it or seek seek for permission from anyone. No, most things don't require. Lots of things nowadays don't require you to you know college degrees. Apart from you being a doctor or a lawyer or something, most things you can learn. You don't need permission to start to venture out. So don't wait for permission. Don't seek permission. Just crack on with what you want to do. Now, let's go into number two. I'll try and give some examples as we go along. Um, number two is simply learn the principles of entrepreneurship. They, you see, there are basic principles for every startup, basic principle, and the principles don't differ. For a basic startup, what you need to know, know the basic, you don't need an MBA for basic principles you just need to know the simple laws of supply and demand the, the the principles of marketing simple things you need to know about entrepreneurship are the things you need to learn so go study out find out what are the basic principles that you need to know as an entrepreneur and um, for you to start out know those basic principles and carry on now let's go to number three number three thing you need to know is start by identifying the problem that you want to solve. Now, if you don't solve a problem, you would be bored in doing what you're doing. So you need to find out exactly what you, your interest in solving that problem is. So solving a problem and creating value for a group of people, a set of people, is very important. I found that actually writing the book, if I'm writing the book also, that I needed to understand who my market would be for the book. So I have to solve a problem for a group of people. So for, what increases my productivity is because I've identified what helps me to branch out as an author to get the book sorted is because I know there's a set of people that want to learn or know more about that area or that subject. So very important, what problem are you going to solve? You need to identify the problem and then you can look for ways of solving it because every problem is an opportunity and life itself brings forth challenges mankind or man or you me we need to find solutions or ways of overcoming those challenges so seek out what the problem is and then solve it 
that's also one way define your problem statement don't jump and say people are doing that i'm going to do it no that's not you will be bored you'll be so frustrated in doing that you need to know what the problem is define that problem statement and then channel your effort your productive effort into solving that problem and you will see that because you're channeling your productive effort into solving that problem you would your productivity will increase because you just want to you want to put more effort productive effort into solving that problem so now let's go what's number four many people burn out quickly so what's number four will help you understand that you can start small you don't need to to make it big initially always know that you can start small start small because it's manageable one man yourself to help you so start small small is not bad small is just the beginning you know start small and then see what happens but start small so you can mitigate risk by that you can actually plan with the small and see but when when, when you try to make it very big at the start it might be daunting and it could wear you out and burn you out and that will reduce your productivity massively now number five Number five is something I've used, especially in delivering productivity in my life, in my career, even in, in delivering the book, is learn to leverage other people's strength. You know, it's involved people. There's this saying that goes that you can go fast alone, but you can go far with others. Now, I'm saying network is important. Like for example, in doing this book, that are written, I actually used the uh, a leveraged strength of people that can make good covers, good, you know, that can help with maybe editing and all that. So you need to leverage the strength of others for you to be able to deliver a finished product. There are lots of cheap and quality. When I say cheap, cheap doesn't mean it's not quality. You know, affordable, let me use the word affordable and quality uh, uh, people that can do things out there. Upworks, for example, you know, you can go into Upworks and you know, can find lots of people that can that, that are fairly affordable and can still deliver quality based on what you require. So learn to leverage on other people's strength. Learn to leverage on your network. You know, you can go far and you will go far. And it you can actually focus as, as an entrepreneur on the things that you have strength in and let people help you with the places where you're weak. And that will increase your productivity. You're not you're not doing everything yourself, but you're leveraging on other people's strength to deliver quality, to deliver value to people. Now, now let's look at number six. Number six is also very key for me, and uh, I know that this channel has, you know, grown over a thousand subscribers, which has surpassed my initial three months mark of getting to a thousand. Now. We're going to the next stage of 2,000. We're growing to the next stage, 3,000, 10,000. And that's my plan. But one thing I want to say, number six is, you need to grow organically. You need to make sure that your growth is organic. You need to understand marketing. You need to understand how to be personable. You know, your customer uh, satisfaction needs to be guaranteed. If you have to send one e emails to each and every one of your customers, you need to do it when you start. You need to be personal. You need to let people see that, yes, I, we are relating with someone, not a virtual machine or an assistant. That's one of the ways. You need to understand marketing. You need to understand email. You need to understand how to put your effort. You need to be personable. You need to be able to reply. When you're growing organically, you can still, at the start, manage to reply all your emails. But what I'm saying is, always put a face to your business or to what you're doing so that people know you so you can guarantee a level of satisfaction to your customers so what i'm saying is grow organically don't don't don't, don't just make it organic make it grow step by step now many people think that oh but because i'm not growing my youtube channel maybe i should quit no keep doing it but make it grow organically Push it out there by marketing. Push it out there by emails. Push it out there for family and friends to subscribe. Push it out there by you know offering people affiliate marketing. Do things that people would you know benefit from and they will see value in that. But ultimately, number six is grow organically. Make your growth organic. Don't force it, but make it organic. Make it synthesize with your people, with your with your with with your 
uh, with the people in your network, make it synthesize with the people you're offering that value to and make them be satisfied because good satisfaction or great satisfaction from your customers will bring more market to you and it will cost them make 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 your customers the people that can even market your 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 channel your book your your vision to other people and grow organically like that now let's go on to the next one number seven number seven is also key for me and it's one of the things i've been doing you know as a process of when i was writing this book number seven is learn new things you see people say jack of all trade is not good but i say that at least know something about everything you don't have to be um, an expert in everything that's almost impossible but you can have basic knowledge about many things and be an expert for example um in my day job i'm a project manager delivering infrastructure project um, projects and, and value to the people in the united kingdom but out of that i've learned in the last few days weeks months is how to present, how to, the act of communicating through presentation. Apart from the fact that I use it in my job, I know that I need to be able to present clearly. For example, I've changed where I present this video. I don't normally use this background, but I found out that the, I've been struggling with lighting in my old videos, and I've decided to learn more about lighting and stopping too much shadow and all that. It's part of the process. I don't have to be an expert in lighting. But I can learn a little because the information is out there. Number number, number two is I've, I've learned how to edit my own videos. Initially, when I started the, 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 this channel, I always send the video off to someone to help me edit. But now I can edit my own videos myself. I don't have to be an expert in editing. There are lots of softwares you can use, a lot of videos on YouTube you can learn from. So what I'm saying is know something about everything. Know something. You you can have basic experience and expertise you don't have to be an expert but basic knowledge in everything so learn new things learn how to write a book if you are learn how to program how to code i've just started learning python with um a youtuber but his youtube videos on on, on programming very detailed and my daughter is also going on the journey with me to learn how to how to code but i'm learning it not because i just want i want to make money from it no but because i might be able to use it on my website, I might be able to, you know, know something basic that I can implement. But learn new things. Stick to learning new things. Programming, editing videos, how to design, how to give presentations, how to communicate, the act of, of asking relevant and good questions. These are the things you can learn. Know the basics and, you know, if you want to be an, uh, a, a master at it, keep learning it. But don't stop learning new things. Now, let's go to number eight. Number eight is because we've said you, you can grow organically. Number eight is evolve and learn from failure. Now, the process of failure is that you have to learn. See failure as an opportunity to learn and move on. Not as, a, not, not as, a, a, as, as, as the stop. See failure as a bend road for you to you know, change direction and do something else. I'll give an example here. I found out that Instagram was never Instagram on the onset. They... The two guys that started Instagram started it with something else, but it evolved. They didn't quit, but it evolved into Instagram photo blogging. That's what happened. It evolved and it became Instagram. They learned from the failure of their first uh, 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 platform and then moved it on to something else. So if something is not working, what can you do? How can you evolve it? Evolve it into something that works and that gives value. As it grows organically, learn from the things that you're failing. Learn from the things that are making you weak and unproductive and begin to evolve. But don't just quit it. You don't have to even change it. You can evolve it to deliver value, to grow organically, to learn from the things that are not working and make them work. Now, let's go. What's number nine? Number nine is very key also in helping you to increase your value. In helping you to increase your productivity. Is focus on value. When you solve a problem and you, are, and you give value, let that be the key point in your heart. Even if it's not giving you money from the start, keep giving value. Many people think it's all about profit. No, but start as an entrepreneur giving value because value attracts the money. The money doesn't have to rush in initially. 
For example, I don't make money from the YouTube channel, but that's not why I'm doing it. I'm just sharing tips that I myself am using. People have asked me the question, how do you manage deliver, um, give, doing writing a book, doing a YouTube channel, pastoring a church, and still doing your day job? It's because I found a way of making it valuable, of giving value, and it's not for the money, and being able to you know, manage my time, and thereby increasing my productivity. So focus on giving value, because value attracts the income. Focus on giving value, because value attracts the income. So that's very important, focus on the value. If it's not yielding money, and if it's a profitable business initially, and it begins to go swindle down, ask yourself, why am I in this business? Why am I doing this? Define your own values, and see exactly why you're doing what you're doing, and that's gonna help you also. Now let's go to the last one. Very simple and short, number 10. Number 10 is just start it and let it and see it grow. Start it and see it grow. You see, as I've said previously in my um, in my last two videos about procrastination, you just have to beat, not starting it. That's it. You can't wait, but beat it and start. And I've also said it before that I started this YouTube channel by you know using my phone as the source of camera without any lighting so what i'm saying is start it and you would see that you will be progressively better and your productivity will increase but start and see it grow i hope you've enjoyed I, i'm sure you, you if you're watching this that means you've made it to the end of the video and i hope you've enjoyed it i'd like you to subscribe and click on the notification bell and just support us on this channel and in my next episode i'll still look at the next things we could do to increase our productivity. Thank you very much and see you again. Bye for now.